What is up guys? Welcome back to a brand new reaction and today we're watching 10 football rules you didn't know existed. As some of y'all probably know, I've been trying to learn more about football. Whether it's just watching it or watching videos like this and learning more about the actual sport. Cause I, I didn't, I don't know that much. You know, these past like two, three months I've learned a lot. But there's a lot of rules and a lot of stuff that goes into this game that I still have no idea about. I have been watching more though. I've been watching a lot of Premier League. I'm trying, I'm trying to get into it. So if y'all want to see more football reactions, let me know by hitting that like button. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. If y'all like these football reactions, whether it's about me learning Learning it, or we try to watch some highlights or something, it's hard because they get copyrighted and the video gets taken down. So, but if y'all want to see more, let me know by hitting that like button. Other than that, let's get into it. Guys and girls, in today's episode, we are looking at 10 unknown football rules. Things that you don't usually encounter in regular football games. And no matter how informed you think you are about football, I'm sure there's a bunch of rules you're gonna hear about for the first time. Marseille, um, you don't know me. I'm not informed, like, at all. <laughs> let's go. Number one. If you score a goal, but the ball goes flat on the way to the goal, the goal doesn't count. The reason for this very unlikely scenario what? is that the ball must be pumped or, more officially, the ball must be of proper condition at all times. So as soon as the ball is not in proper condition, the game should be stopped. Now, I did So find a if you kick it hard enough for that damn ball to pop and you score a goal, it doesn't count with the <laughs> Where a player actually scores in the Champions League with a ball that basically explodes midway through the air. And to my knowledge, the goal did actually count. Probably because wow. this is very difficult for the referees to spot. Obviously, yeah. the likelihood of the ball ever exploding in your football match <laughs> is, well, quite flat. But now you know. Number two, yellow card for an illegal celebration remains, even if the goal is disallowed. And as the name suggests, if you score a goal, for example, take your shirt off as you celebrate, but a VAR check disallows your goal, well, you're still gonna be booked for an illegal celebration. According to the rule makers, this is because the impact is the same as if the goal was awarded. So don't get angry. If you celebrate illegally, get a yellow card and your goal won't even count. It's low key worse, cause now you're technically just celebrating for nothing. <laughs> Number three. You can be sent off before the match even starts. Now, you may or may not have been on the receiving end of a red card in your career. But from now on, just be aware that if you're acting like a complete fool already during warm-up, the ref has every right to dismiss you before the game is even kicked off. You Damn. could, for example, say something horribly offensive to the referee or a player from the other team. Or in the case of Patrice Evra, he was dismissed from the game after attacking a fan during warm-up in 2017. What? Damn! Once again, this is a rule most of us don't ever have to worry about, as long as you behave properly before and after kickoff. Imagine like seeing like the other team in the airport or something, and you're just like, we're gonna beat you tonight, y'all suck. And just so happens that ref that's refing that game that night is behind you, and he just pulls it out of his luggage. You're, <laughs> you can't even get on the plane to go anymore. <laughs> Number four, the amount of players allowed to take penalty kicks in the shootout must be equal for both teams. In simple language, this means that if a player from Team A gets sent off during the actual playing time and we go to penalties, Team B then has to exclude one of their players from the shootout as well. Oh. This happened, for example, in the 2006 World Cup final between Italy and France. And I'll give you a bit of time to try and guess which player from Team Italy missed the penalty shootout because of this rule. But to run through the whole thing, Zidane was very famously sent off in the 110th minute of the game. And since France had only 10 players on the pitch going into the penalties, Team Italy had to exclude a player from the shootout. See, I didn't know that. I figured, hey, you should have told him to chill out and kept his cool a little bit, because now, hey, you're short of player. But you know, I guess to keep it fair, it makes sense. Did you guess who it was? Well, the correct answer is Gennaro Gattuso, who finished playing the full 120 minutes but didn't stand with the rest of Team Italy in the center circle during penalties because of this very rule. But huh. I'm pretty sure he's more than happy with the final outcome. Number 5. You could start the game with just 7 players. We all know an official football game consists of two teams with 11 players each on the pitch. But before kickoff, if for whatever reason your team was short of players, you could technically start playing with just seven players, which is the minimum requirement for the game to go on. What for the, the heck? same reason, in the 11 aside game, your on field team can get a maximum of four red cards. Fifth one would stop the game, as you would then have less than seven players on the pitch. Keep in mind that this rule does not include substitute players. They can get as many red cards as possible. So as long as you have seven legal players on the pitch, the game can get started and go on. 
Uh, has there ever been a game where four people got kicked out and it actually had to play with seven? Because, you know, I feel like it's rare for somebody to get a red card anyways and somebody to get kicked out of the game. But for four people on the same team to do it in the same game, that's, that's ridiculous. Like, <laughs> there's something else going on. We need to talk to these players. <laughs> Although it would probably not be a lot of fun to start a game, already four players down. Number 6. No attacking players closer than 1 meter from the wall. This is another rule that was officially implemented in the game from June 1st, 2019. The rule ah. is that when there's a wall of 3 or more defenders, the attackers are not allowed within 1 meter of the wall when the kick is taken. Otherwise, the team will be penalized with an indirect free kick. According to the rule makers, this new addition was implemented because attackers standing very close to or in the defensive wall at a free kick often cause management problems and waste time. There's no legitimate tactical justification for attackers to be in the wall and their presence is against the spirit of the game and often damages the image of the game. What the so heck? That's crazy. For that to be the reason that rule's implemented, like... <laughs> now on, you're unfortunately not allowed within one meter of the wall when your team has a free kick. And if you notice your opposing team breaking this rule in your game, you gotta tell the referee to check out this episode. Number 7. You can't score an own goal from a free kick or throw-in. In fact, you can never score an own goal directly with any kind of play that restarts the game, whether it's a free kick, corner kick, goal kick, throw-in or penalty kick. Oh. But if you do play the ball into your own net, basically the ball crossed the goal line without anyone else touching it and since your touch was the last one, a corner kick should be given to the opposing team. So to put it in simple language, if you take a free kick and score an own goal without anyone else touching the ball, as embarrassing as the moment would be, the goal shouldn't count. Again, See, I this didn't is know that. I figured it'd be a goal. But it does make sense though, since nobody else touched it and it, the game was stopped and you're trying to get the game going again, so those rules that you're most likely never going to experience unless something insane happens. That's all, that's almost like scoring on your own goal in basketball, which I did that before in like fourth grade basketball, okay? We all get mixed up sometimes. But in basketball, it counts for the other team. If you go down on your own goal and you score a layup, the other team gets the points regardless, so... <laughs> but regardless, it's a fun one to know. Number 8. The team that wins the toss can now choose to take the kickoff or which goal to attack. This is a quick one as it's pretty straightforward. But in the past, the captain who won the coin toss could only choose which goal to attack. But he can now choose to start the game instead. Now this is another recent addition to the official football rulebook. And while it may not be the most meaningful one, well, now you know it exists. Number 9. In penalty situations, the goalkeeper must not be touching the goalposts, crossbar or nets. They must not be moving. In short, the referee they should not signal for the penalty kick to be taken if, for example, the goalkeeper is smacking the crossbar to try and intimidate the penalty taker and the goal starts shaking. Now, I at least don't ever recall seeing the referee delaying the penalty kick because the goalkeeper is moving the goal. But no matter what, it's a rule, and I guess it's mainly the referees who really need to be aware of this. So one. the goal can't be moving. I thought they said the, the goalkeeper couldn't move. I was like, what? <laughs> That kind of takes his whole job away. <laughs> and speaking of goalkeepers, lastly, number 10. Goalies can hold the ball for a maximum of 6 seconds. Many what? of us know that after catching the ball, goalkeepers can't obviously hold on to the ball forever. That would be stupid. And the official time is set at 6 seconds. While most of the times this rule is not super heavily enforced, usually it just causes the opposition players to get frustrated. For example, this incident with Mignolet holding onto the ball for way too long resulted in an indirect free kick to the opposition. Damn. Still, it's quite rare to see the referee penalizing this action, but now you know about the six second yeah rule. i thought they could hold it forever if they wanted to <laughs> but all right guys those are 10 football rules you didn't know existed i literally didn't know any of those existed <laughs> again i'm new to the sport anyway so you could have said literally anything and i would have believed him but <laughs> y'all let me know what y'all thought about this down in the comments again if y'all want to see more football reactions let me know by hitting that like button thank you guys so much for watching make sure i go out today spread love spread kindness do something nice to somebody today i love you guys so much i really do get your action i'm out peace